This new Photoshop AI tool generated this in just a few seconds. Today I'll show you step by step how you can use this tool in your workflow. Now, the whole process is very easy. You will have a text box where you can tell the AI what you want to create. If you're not familiar with the whole AI process yet, you give a prompt to the AI which tells it which type of image you want. And after you give it a couple of seconds to think, it will create a brand new image for you from scratch. And you can be quite specific, like having an asphalt road with potholes or changing it to a gravel road. Again, all of this can be done within seconds. And so this is the new Photoshop beta. As you can see, now we have this new bar, which when you select something, it will have a new prompt. Let me show you. I'm going to start with expanding images. This is something that you probably already saw. So if I drag like this, let's say I want to make my image now vertical, something like this. I press enter and now I will select this area and always leave just a little bit of the previous uh, image, a little bit, and you can click here, generate a fill. Now here, let me just move this to the top. You can actually, if you click here, you can pin bar position. So it's not all the time on the bottom, then here on top of the image, you can leave it always here. And so here you can describe what you want or you can leave it blank and let the AI decide for you. So I'm just going to click generate. <laughs> and so we have the continuation of this asphalt road. We have three options and we either I'm going to just move this here, the properties, because we have this option. We have here on the top, you'll see one slash three. So we have three options that you can select or you can see in the properties here and you can just click these variations. If we don't like any of them, we can just click generate and it will generate three new variations. So here you go, three new variations. And uh, <laughs> well, I, actually I kind of like this one matches a little bit this area, but I think this is fault road now it's way too wide. So what you can do, we can start creating on top of what you've done. So you can click here and this area, let's say that now I want to be specific. So I'll give it a prompt like side walk and generate. Cool. <laughs> Not really, <laughs> it didn't create the sidewalk we wanted. Let's try again, maybe concrete sidewalk and let's see the results. So as you can see, the AI doesn't do anything like magically appear from nowhere. You have to be specific. You have to try different things because oftentimes it will fail. So now this is much better, as you can see. The second one, oh, this one even has the curve. I wanted to show you that you can add a curve later, but actually this one has the curve. <laughs> so yeah, this is very good. But I'm going to use this, this one or maybe the first one. Let's see. I'm going to use this one and on this area here i'm just going to give just a little bit of room here and i'm going to say oops sidewalk curve and so let's try to create this, the curve that it didn't create initially on this uh, on this image nothing <laughs> nothing and nothing maybe the selection wasn't big enough so let's try again and maybe we can leave it like this Okay, now we can see something. We can see a little bit of the curve. Actually, this one's not bad, or even this one. There's some, something here, but we can always remove it. But uh, yeah, kind of looks like a sidewalk curve. So you see, we can start expanding these images and start creating more and more and more on top of each other. Uh, of course, here, you can simply just generate and it will just create the new sky. It will complete the sky that we have. Brand new sky. And in a couple of seconds, you see that we already extended our image to be vertical. Now, another thing that you can do is to replace materials. And so I have here my material ID mask. And what you can do is select on this material ID. So you see, I can select this material or this one. Well, actually, let's start with this one and let's see what it will create. So we select it and now we can go to the generate fill and say that we want to concrete facade. And let's see if it will create just concrete facade on that specific area. <laughs> Not really. Mm, maybe. Mm. So I think in this it's really failing to understand. Uh, maybe we can try one more time. Instead of selecting everything again, uh, you can always click here or here and give it a different prompt. Okay, now it's better. 
looks much better. Actually, let me zoom in. Of course, the, the resolution is not the same and it has some issues here, but uh, it's getting there. Let's see the second option. <laughs> I don't know what's this, but <laughs> okay. And the third one, it's a completely, complete fail. So this one cannot use, but well, let's say that the house it's has two completely different styles. <laughs> let's keep this one here. So this is another thing you can do it's with a material ID. You can select specific areas and generate based on it. So for example, another thing, we can select this guy and uh, now just extend the selection. And what I want to say is clouds. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it was very interesting. So I'm going to do this a little bit different now. I'm going to add all of these changes that we made into a new layer. And now I'm going to go to edit and sky replacement. So we want to replace the sky. Uh, it doesn't matter what sky it is, just this one, it's okay, because I just want to use the mask that Photoshop created. And now with this mask, let's do again. Clouds. Again, it's failing completely. It's kind of extending what, what, what we have already. You see that when you add specific things like just clouds like this, it doesn't understand what you want. Maybe we can say cloudy sky instead. Okay, it's better. It's still uh, adding here on this area. It was adding a house. Yeah, this one is better. You just see one thing. It's adding new palm trees. Okay, so we can try now a little bit different. For example, let's select this area and let's add again clouds. <laughs> Beautiful clouds. Very realistic. <laughs> These ones are the best. So yeah, you can send this to the client and say that this is the most realistic render you ever done. <laughs> and why this is happening? Because you just add clouds and it doesn't really understand what you want. It's like it's putting all types of clouds that you can find. You can say we want uh, maybe sky with clouds or cloudy sky. So we say sky with clouds. Okay, it's a little bit better now. I still think they look a little bit fake, these ones. And I'm just going to freely make like a, a mask around it, just like this. So something like that. And instead, I'm just going to say sky. Well, maybe, but they are with very low opacity. So yeah, you can see that we can add some new things, but there's still some limitations to this. Let's see if it can generate the rest of this car. So let's click here. Let's add this and let's just click generate fill. <laughs> well, it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> Second option. And well, if it was just a little bit more squeezed in a little bit and this headlight needs to needs work. So for this image, I'm going just to extend it like this. And on this area, First, I want to just generate. So this is actually quite nice, this one. And on top of this, now I want to add, can create something like this and kind of flows into this area and something like that. We can say like, <laughs> that's quite nice. It's reflecting the car as well. So in this one looks good, but uh, I want to improve here that this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say some large canyons. <laughs> oh, okay. This one, this one is okay. And yeah, it's gone. Oh, this one is nice. Hmm. And so just a few clicks, we go from this to this. Quite nice. <laughs> and speaking of organization, I've just watched a masterclass on productivity and organization on Skillshare, who are kindly sponsoring this video. 
You may know Skillshare already from their classes on stuff like photography, film editing and illustration. What you might not know is that they also have hundreds of career-focused classes. There's always room to evolve and reinvent ourselves, right? So recently I've been feeling the urge to tighten up my organization skills, especially with all the content I'm planning to release. I stumbled upon this class about Notion on Skillshare from a popular YouTuber called Ali Abdal. His class is called Notion Masterclass Maximize Your Productivity and Organization and it's super helpful. Skillshare got classes that dive into career-specific subjects like breaking into various creative fields, freelancing, interior design, and even an architecture photography course. This is a point I always emphasize in my videos and courses. If you want to nail those 3D renders, you gotta grasp the basics of photography and know what makes an image really stand out. And here's the coolest part. You can access all these classes at absolutely no cost during the one month free trial. So if you are one of the first 1000 people to hit the link in the video description, you get to sign up for a free one month trial of Skillshare. So let's say that I extend this image like this. And so I will generate all of this area. And so it looks quite nice, right? This one, even this one looks quite good. Okay, let's go with this one. And what we can see here, if we zoom in. So this is my render and this is the generated image. So you see that it looks super, super blurry. And of course you cannot work with this, right? So there is one limitation now, which is the image are generated at 1024 pixels maximum. So what you could do instead of generating the whole image as a whole, let's see, we can generate little patches. So for example, let's say 1024 by 1024. And actually, so I can create this whole section here. If I create generate, so now you can see that it keeps the same resolution, right? So here as well, you can see that it's more or less the same resolution as the, the, the image. So let's try to generate small patches. So maybe we can generate now this patch and see what it will be. So you see, now it's much more detailed. You have much better resolution than before. It's a night and day. So if I disable these two and enable back, you see that this is much, much blurry. But with this one, if I put it on top, you can see big improvement. So I'm going to do this to, for the rest of the image so you can compare. And so this is the new image with all little bits of chunks generated of not bigger than 1024 pixels. And this is the before and this is the after. But if now we go really close, we can see all of these details as with before, it was all quite blurry. Okay, so this is just a, a trick that you can use to make your image look sharper using the AI. Next, I want to show you how you can create basically infinite backgrounds to use in your project. So you can create a new image and let's say that it's uh, not going to make it super big just for this, this uh, video. So we can just select this and say New York City skyline daytime. And so as you can see now, we have a completely new image that you can use. It looks like New York and we have three different options. Well, this one is not <laughs> good, but this one is a more golden hour mood. So this, these images, I imagine using them uh, as a backdrop for our interior renders and usually these images are a little bit overexposed. So they kind of look like this, if I show you. So if we were to, if we were to imagine that we have a curtain, it's to be something that probably <laughs> looks a little bit like this. So it will not be quite visible, but you know that it, there's something there. And so for images like this, I think it can work quite well. Uh, and you can generate a lot of different images like this. So let's say instead of uh, New York, you want, uh, forest panorama. I don't know if it understands focal length here, but I'll try. Focal length 
24 millimeters. So for this type of thing, it's, it looks really good. Yeah. So this looks fine. I want to remove now the focal length and instead of this forest panorama, maybe city skyline from okay it looks tall <laughs> that you are in a tall tall area yeah definitely yeah this is quite good again it kind of looks like <laughs> new york i i really enjoy this it's this one it's quite good again of course if we were to zoom to the image we see that we have the limitation of the pixels Again, for this type of images, where you don't see much of the details, I think it can work quite well. Another one that we're going to create, it's a new image of 1024 by 1024, which is the maximum size that it, this is creating. And what I'm going to do now is red brick texture tile. So maybe we can also start creating our own textures using these uh, AI tools. <laughs> Look at this. We have a tile texture, this one not really, uh, this one it's too simple, but this one is something that I can see myself using it, it's quite nice. Look, if you go to filter and offset, maybe we can do horizontally and vertically. So yeah, we can see that it's not seamless, this texture, so we need to do some adjustments to make it tileable, but uh, we have a good start here. For example, let's see, say something, wood, floor, texture, maybe if we say tileable, would it make a difference? Let's see. I, I, I don't see floors like this, but <laughs> let's pretend this is good. And let's just see, again, the offset. So on this one, it's actually kind of more difficult to understand, but if we zoom in, so we see that vertically we will need to adjust, but it's quite easy this texture to adjust this, this tileable part. So this is good. It has the shadows from the sun, so this is not nice to be used. We don't want that. This is better, much better. But anyway, let's say that I like this texture or this one. We could use this one. One thing we could do, yeah, actually this one looks quite nice, like in the overcast scenario. So we do we do have some tiling, but since this texture, it's with a lot of noise, it's quite easy to make it tileable. So this is another thing that you can try, is to create your own textures using this AI tool. And let me know if you want me to explore more things that you can do with, uh, with, with this AI tool, or especially related to textures, because I feel that we can go much deeper into this subject. And let me show you how you can actually download this. You can just go to the Creative Cloud and here, if you go to Apps and then Beta Apps, you will find here all the list of all the Beta Apps that you can download. So you just click here, Install. For example, if I want to install the Illustrator Beta, I'll click here, Install, and then you can use it. So this is all you need to do. And if by any reason you don't see this menu, okay, this menu here, what you can do is go to Window and Contextual Taskbar. So you see if I disable it, if I put it back, now you are able to see this taskbar. So this was just some ideas on how you can use these new AI tools to improve your workflow. Let me know in the comments below how you are using these tools to improve your workflow. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.